I was hoping there'd be a little bit more interval between your keynote speaker and my presentation. Uh, <laughs> however, <clears throat> what I'll show you, uh, I've had a lot of experience with quantum digital and it goes really way back. Before this job, I was working at a really big real estate company. I was uh, working for Weikert Realtors. And in that company, uh, Jim Weikert, who started that business, had some really good insights. Uh, I'll never forget, uh, I would go in there telling him new things we were doing on the internet. Uh, there's always some new thing going on in real estate, some new media thing. We, you know, Whether we were going to use interactive uh, uh, video in the offices or you know, get training on satellite or when the internet came around, he'd always say, Frederick, we can try that, but just tell me how many houses will we sell? Uh, I know that if we ha hold the house open, if we call the people across the street and let them know it's available, if we say thank you to our customers, we're gonna do more business. So we'll do all that technology, but do the personal things first. And then to validate that, in the real estate industry, if you look back, the National Association of Realtors polls 100,000 people every year and asks them, well, how did you choose your company you worked with? How did you choose your agent? 53% choose somebody they knew, they liked, that they've done business before, that personal validation that you were referring to. That's half the real estate business is relationship. So Jim would always start, people buy people before they buy products or services. It's true. So, well, what does that leave the marketer? Well, there's the other half. And the other half is divided into two things. It's direct response. So you can get people who are not committed to a friend. Maybe some people have no friends. Or you can try to make, make more friends. And with the social media, we're finding some of that's happening. So let me see if this works. Uh, so the business itself was very newspaper dependent for a long time. Direct mail, we met on a direct mail product, which was the just listed card going out into the community. Um, direct mail has taken interesting rise, fall, and, and it's rising again in some other ways. And we've got some applications here. Things that I did with these guys, that actually worked. The other thing that Jim would say was, um, <clears throat> that in any, again, any other investment, well, how many houses did we sell? How are we gonna make another commission? Where do we get the money back if we invest in this? So that's one industry where the, the branding was the big yellow signs that were everywhere. People would see that. That's about as much branding as we did. Everything else was, well, we had to have an attributable result. And you can get that with some of this direct response. So when we started, this is still pretty prevalent in the industry. I think we actually, you know, we probably have people who write recipes for some of the cards that go out right in this company here. But the industry has for a long time had cute, adorable messages, recipe cards, different things like that that go out. It's still effective because it is still a personal business. They remember that person and they get back to them. But there are other messages that can take some, uh, take some share from this product, and we started playing with that stuff. This? No, that's all right. Sure. Uh, well, let's try it. You know, Beyonce had an awesome video. Uh. <laughs> so... <laughs> Some of this stuff is starting to lose effect, and the reason was is that if the market is really in tumult, if, if it turns out you might lose your house, if you might lose your entire equity investment in it, all of a sudden the banana nut loaf in conjunction with you know real estate doesn't quite make as much sense. Um, <clears throat> so we started doing some other things, and one was to put a very specific call to action on our direct mail pieces. And this is something that we offered to real estate agents. They could buy it in conjunction with an online product. So you'd buy a position on realtor.com where you could advertise to the public that you would tell them what their home was worth. You can, and you could put your address in there and it would show you nearby sales. We were actually one of the first ones to, to do that. And then we backed this up with a direct mail piece What's interesting for this with the real estate community is that it's hyper, hyper local 
and direct mail gets you hyper, hyper local. I mean, geographically, every, every other kind of market or community can move around and it can swarm to a different makeup, but the location of real estate doesn't do that. So the direct mail gets you right to the specific target you want. And what we did is we put a unique ID on every postcard and that postcard was entered into a system that would uh, give you back a report on what was going on in your neighborhood, but would also indicate who the recipient was. So for the real estate agents now, instead of just saying, well, hey, I'm in real estate, it's, it's so hard to find real estate agents, isn't it? I mean, there are some communities in California where you could throw a potato in the produce section of a grocery store and you'd have a one in 10 chance of hitting a realtor. So. <clears throat> So, so to go beyond that, I can tell you what your home is worth. That was a pretty effective message. But then something else happened. What your home was worth was always, well, yeah, it's interesting to know what your home is worth because I want to see if it went up 3%, did it go up 5% or did it go up like 10 or 15? I really want to know. Even if I'm not selling, it was a way to sort of validate and check on your asset, right? Now, People were thinking a little differently. It's, well, I don't so much want to know what my home is worth because I know there's some bad news out there. I kind of want to wait. I want to know, has the home price started to stabilize in the neighborhood or, or what else is going on? <clears throat> so we started to experiment with, with different kinds of messaging. We're selling this product, it's live, and so we have to be really careful that the agents who buy it are continuing to get a response. So what we're able to do with digital is in one very quick test with 7,500 recipients, we broke that up into 238 discrete groupings of postcards <clears throat> and tested all those messages. And this is the message that got the most resonance. But that was very, a, a way to quickly sift through 23 different ideas. Everybody had a different theory. There were a lot of things in conference rooms about what might be most effective. But more than what is my home worth, has the real estate market to, started to stabilize? That got a 700% response, 700% uh, lift in response over any of the other messages we were testing. Another area where we found that using some direct print and some variable print saved us some money and, and actually enabled us to go to market with a better message quicker was, and I'm sure you've had this experience, the turnaround time in some of the publications that we run in is just too long to really test much. It was a 60 day run up to run an, a full page ad. The ad was expensive on a national basis and if it failed, so you, you, you've got the 60 day run up, you run the ad, the ad doesn't pull that well okay, you create new creative, you try it again, another 60 day run up, another time for the publication to hit. You could be through half a year before you finally find the targeted message that's gonna work most effectively. And it's not a focus group that's gonna tell you what people are gonna respond to, because people will say, oh yeah, I'd respond to that ad, and then you run the ad and nobody responds. So, <laughs> so what we did, these were the ads we were running, and these were all just really great creative ideas. One of them showed our market share, one of them showed um, the advantages of moving from uh, print, uh, newsprint to uh, the internet and what the effectiveness of that was. One of them got something like three calls. So <clears throat> what we did, so that wouldn't happen again, is we took these messages, we applied them onto a, a small card, had that tacked into the magazine, and ran 12 different messages one month, and we didn't even wait for the results. We ran our best guess, 12 different messages competing with it the next month. So we had 24 different messages in a magazine that we intended to advertise in, in one run of the magazine. And we were quickly able to determine that this was the one that was going to get the best response. So we cut that whole, you know, eight, 12, six month cycle of effectively refining the message into just one or two quick print runs. And we ran this one. And as a result, we were suddenly able to get maybe 50, 60 uh, responses from the card and then a significantly larger number when we ran it into the full page ad. With our real estate audience, if we just advertised product, said we have this ad position you can buy, it costs this, and there's a discount on it, it started to diminish in its effectiveness and to the point of just telling the advertisers who you are and how great you are wasn't working. We found, especially in a troubled market, we had to go out there, identify some real problems, and step in there with the real estate agent and say, hey, we can help you with that. We've got 